Hey everybody, welcome back to the Woodworking Wisdom Workshops here at Axminster Tools. My name's Craig. Today I'm going to put to you a project um, using our UJK uh, Universal Jointing Jig. We've got this little kind of bedside table, nightstand, sofa side table that we're going to do. Um, there's going to be a good amount of box jointing going on. We've not got a box as such, so clamping is going to be a little bit tricky. We'll go through the clamping as we go. Um, well, this is a two-parter, so today we'll be cutting all the joints and we'll glue up. Part two tomorrow, so make sure you tune in as well. Tomorrow we will be um, removing from the clamps, planing, sanding, oiling, all that sort of stuff to make these colours really pop, like you can see on this beautiful piece of tulip. I know, who would have thought it was tulip? Boring old tulip. But we've been quite lucky, and you know, we do use a lot of tulip, as you've no doubt gathered. And... Um, yeah, we've, uh, I saved some of the best, most colourful, prettiest boards for this sort of project. So I started by planing my boards down. I've got a couple of pictures. There we go. That's one of the boards that's been through my spiral planer thicknesser. That board is, um, you know, I, I'm working on around nine and a half inches wide boards. And I've skimmed that down to 19 mil, so three quarters of an inch. It's kind of a thickness that kind of worked for me. So it's nice, flat true clean then i was uh, chopping to length on my good old trusty bosch glide saw now this is an important thing that if you're making boxes doing any dovetail joints any box joints that your timber is cut squarely it's going to make a much nicer job for you in the end um you're making sure those all those joints come together with minimal gaps so from there, I ended up with these components. There we go. We can see that the three pieces there look the same size. They're 235, 240 millimeters wide and 300 long. We've got the little bit in the middle, which is 130 long. And then the bit on the end, the tall longest bit is 450. Now that's going to give us an overall cabinet size of 580 millimeters tall, which is just under two foot. Um, and it, those sizes kind of looked about right to me. Proportionally, um, with the thickness of the material and the height and all that stuff, it looked right to me. Obviously, you can upscale, downscale these sizes if you fancy having a go yourself. So let's have a closer look at that. Let's go down to camera two, please, Ben. We've got Ben on cameras today, ladies and gentlemen. So there we go. You can see these beautiful, look at the contrast that comes through. Now, the temptation is, is to try and follow some of this grain pattern all the way around so it kind of looks the same and flows around the cabinet. But I wanted to try and create a real contrast between light and dark on the corners. So my, some, of the, some of the darker bits yeah, sit against the lighter bits and really make these joints stand out. Because I think that's the feature of this particular project. And, and just look at that lovely colouring on this. Um, clamping's a little bit tough because, you know, when you're clamping a box, you've got four sides to pull against each other. We're open here, which it makes it a bit more tricky, but I've got a couple of little bits and bobs to show you on that. And then we've got the bottom, obviously, and another set of box joints there. Obviously, we've only done one end. We've not done this end. We've done the joint coming together there. But I think it's really quite a nice looking object. Different quirky maybe but really puts good use to this uh, this jig so let's go overhead and we'll look at the material that i've got there we are there's my tulip so there's the the long bit it's going to form the the tall upright and they've got three pieces and then a little joining piece of 130 millimeters all right so what i'm going to do i'm going to start with a start with a layout all right how's this going to look to me which bits do I want visible? I've got quite a significant knot there. Do I want it inside? Do I want it outside? I'm going to put it inside. So let's do that. I've got some nice colourful pieces here. A little bit of cat's paw going on there. I'm going to put that there. So that now I think that's going to be my base and one of my uprights. Then, let's just nudge that over a little bit. Oh, that's fallen over. I'm going to put the plainest bit in the middle there, like that. 
let's put that there there's me 130 mil let me just nudge that over a little bit all right there we go so there's me 130 my bridging piece in effect and then i've got this nice colorful piece which will form the top okay so it's kind of going to match the top that i've got on my existing one so i'm going to kind of do it like that and we can see that shape coming together now already i'm going to number these because there's two different obviously your males and your females to do they're going to be that's going to be one that's going to be a one so they're the ones that i'm going to machine first and all these are going to end up as twos if there's an end that i don't need machined obviously i don't need this end i'm just going to put a little cross i do not want to machine that end just makes it nice and clear all right what we've got i'm going to mark also put a bigger cross on the inside so i know it's my kind of inside faces this marking is quite important if you've got a particular layout that you want and stuff you see you want to see and don't want to see bit of a knot or a grubby bit of grain that you want to hide away so now i've got my layout now fantastic and what i can even do I can number these corners if I want, which I might do afterwards. That'll help me with my glue up. I think first off, I'm going to take this large piece here, and that's the bit I'm going to machine first, okay? I've got to do a top and a bottom. So this gets loaded into my jig, and I've already set the side stop. So it comes against the side stop, underside of the fingers, and locked in position. I've got this backing board in here, which is really important because it helps support my fingers, keeping things nice and flat. And also, I can push it up against my board that I want, the wood, my board that I'm cutting, and it'll help support the back of the cut as I'm coming through with the cutter, stopping a bit of breakout, which is great. And um, that's going to be locked in position. You can use any old bit of scrap for this, but it's got to be flat and level. There we are. So that just gets locked in position. I've made sure that we're central. So this area here and here is equal. And that's going to help with the, the corner alignment of your, your jig when these two pieces come together, just to minimize the, uh, the step that sometimes occurs there. And I've set my side stop, as I've said, to ensure that each time I come back, these are equal. The cutter I'm going to use is the one that comes out of the box oh so a 12.5 millimeter straight cutter and it's the 19 mil guide bush so all of this out of the box with this particular jig nice and simple i've got my trusty bosch 1250 watt router all right let me just turn that love this router on this sort of work loads of power easy to handle but it's got a real nice fine adjuster here so I can tweak that cutter up and down just to get it where exactly where I want it. Setting cutter depth is important. It's easy on this jig. You take your opposing board, you put your opposing board in and under and with a nice sharp pencil, draw a line. I've got a line underneath there now. You probably can't see on camera, but there's a nice line there just to set my cutter to. Okay. So I'm going to just nudge these bits to one side so they don't end up falling over in use. Let's set that cutter depth. All right, so plunging through. Let's have a look. Right, so fine tune. This is what I like about the, the Bosch. We can really fine tune and tweak that cutter. So the tip of my cutter hits it's my nice sharp pencil line. There we are. Okay, that's going to slide through there beautifully. In and out those fingers, guide bush following, extraction in place, sliding magnetic extraction, that's going in place. I plug my router in and I'm good to go. I am going to use a PPE, obviously I'm going to get my eyes protected. It's quite a loud particular application this particular job so i'm most definitely going to put my ears on you should still be able to hear me talk and stuff where are my ears here we go so eyes and ears are a must there we go all right 
I've got my ears. Oh, I haven't put my eyes on. Here we go. So, eyes on first. Ears. Now, the extraction on this is pretty good. It draws a good amount of waste away. Uh, if I was doing this for a really long time, I might get a, an ambient air filter in the room as well, just to help keep that airborne dust down. But there we go. We are ready to go. So that router is powered up. Let's have a look. So we'll do the first one. So a nice smooth, I'm not pushing too hard. It's quite a lot, we're taking 19 mil by 12 mil out in one go here. So a nice, steady, slow feed through the material. Tulip can be a bit splintery, so I don't want to give it too much and chip out. And go into that ply, that's that extra bit of noise that you hear towards the end. The judder is just hitting into that ply. Slide that along, there we go. Gently. Wait till the machine to stop before we lift off. And there we go. Hopefully you can see from the top maybe we've got all of our fingers cut. It's all gone through there. That looks really clean. I've not missed anything. I've not missed any of the fingers. So all I do now is remove this, flip it over end to end back up against the underside of the fingers, back against the, the, the side stop, locked in position, and we go again. Slide the extraction over, here we go. And I'm not machining too fast. I'm never worried about the router tipping on this particular jig. We've got this really nice support bar here. Keeps everything flat and level. Slide that over, there we go. Nice and smooth. Wait for the machine to come to a stop and we'll take it off. And there we go. That's our two ends done nice and cleanly, nice and equally. We're looking for equal spacing here. Depth is set and regular. Machining number one. That's a, the most difficult bit to machine, really, because it's the, it's the biggest. Right. So where were we? Let's make sure we're where we were. We were there on the inside. That was the bit there. That was the bit there, remember? Okay. Next bit is another number one. So that's the same as that bit, machined in the same way. It's quite quite small. It's about as much as, as the narrowest piece you can get in there is about 130 mil, which is about five inches. But it really does just get cut in the same way. So we get locked in position, slide the extraction back over, and machine again in, as I said, just the same way.
Okay, wait for it to come to a stop. Router comes off. Bosch router stops nice and quickly. There we go. The other end. Flip round. In it goes. Up against the side stop. Under the side of the fingers. Lock it in position. Slide the extraction over. Go again. Like I said, we are removing a lot of material here. And the extractor is coping with it very well. I've got it hooked up to the fed tool extractor. Slide that over. Piece. There we go. Wait for the router to come to a stop. There it is. Okay, so we've got that component done now. All right, so we can see we're machined there. We're machined there. Now we've got to machine these pieces. I'm going to do this one first, and this one locks into this one. But I'm going to use this one to do my setup. What we've got is the fingers come. You use the, the piece you've just machined to to set up for the next. Make sure that that is unlocked and out of the way. Side stop shifted. This comes up, and you push up through. Then you use this little setting gauge. It comes with the jig just to make sure that everything is central. Equal spacing between the timber you've just machined and the finger. Push the side stop over to your material. In fact, we can lock the board in, that, that helps stop the movement. Lock the side stop. There we go. Unlock. Just want to double check that. Nothing move when I was tightening up. No, that's all equal through there now. All right, so each time now I can bring my piece in up against the side stop, knowing it's going to come out in the right position. Okay, so this end in, and we're working on the other side of the jig now, because that's the setup we've just made. All right, there we are. Locked off. Just make sure I tighten that side stop up as well as I thought I did. Yes, I did. That's good. It's locked in and we'll go again. All right, now there's only one end I need to do with this. I don't need to reset the, uh, the depth itself because I've already done that because I'm working on the same material thickness. It's all done. So it's really quick changeover to do one side and then the other. Okay. This machine on through, slow and steady. Cutting very, very well. Got a nice sharp cutter in this one. Always important. When you're doing any kind of work, particularly something with a bit of detail like this, that you're not fighting against the blunt cutter. This is going to leave you. Potentially a poor finish. Oh, one more, missed it. There we go, that's just going into that bit of ply. And what you can do, if you're not sure, did I get everything, did I miss something, just go back again. Just like that. Just to ensure that everything's been taken care of. And there we go. So let's remove that. That board there now is going to lock into that board there. Okay, we can see that. All right, nice. I'll take this board now 
and I'll do both ends on this one, remember? Because it's got to lock in here and here. So let's do that. In, remember which side of the jig we're working on, so we're coming over to here now. These are kind of number twos, if you like. And we'll go again. box joint or finger joint as it's known there's no adjustment to fit some of the other joints you can move the cutter up or down and tweak the jig itself just to get a better fit this one comes together nicely every time one more and you can see we're pretty much using the jig up to its full capacity 12 inches wide, 300 mils is full capacity. We're a little over nine and a half inches. Just checking I didn't miss anything. I don't normally am quite used to this one. All right, there we are. Remember, we've got to do both ends of this one. So we will do that. Just same way around. Flip it round end to end. In it goes, over it goes. Up against the underside of the fingers, up against the side stop, and we go again. And I said a moment ago, it's important to have sharp cutters. This particular cutter, the Excalibur range of cutters, kind of industrial grade cutters, so they do last a long, long time in kind of normal wood, if you like. I can't see why you would, but if you're more inclined to use ply or even MDF, they are going to blunt the cutters more quickly than even some of the hardest of hardwoods. MDF is notoriously bad for blunting even carbide cutters. But it does stand up to the daily rigors of machining MDF, but does. It is quite abrasive and the resins used, they do affect the cutter quite a bit. Okay. Wait for that to come to a stop. And there we've got the piece that locks in there now. You can see that. That's coming in. If we go overhead, we're locked in in this corner and we're going to lock in in this corner so we're already there i've got one more to do which is just this bottom corner here which i'm going to do in just the same way and you can see now once you get set up you figure out your dimensions and sizes you're getting used to your jig how quick some of this stuff can be not the speed is everything it's nice Particularly if you've got a few orders for this sort of thing and you're batching. You can rattle through this quite quickly. Sometimes on a piece of timber you'll find that, you know, the colour is, is nice, looks lovely. But often that coloured area, and I do find it on tulip, that coloured area machines differently, feels more dense, and you can feel it in the router. It doesn't glide through as smoothly, you've got to slow down a little bit, give it time to cut. Pretty much a feel thing, and the more you do this sort of thing, the more you get used to that sort of stuff. Often, you know, a beautiful piece of wood will will take more cutting, more machining. Well, that is all of my routing done. All the routing done. How quick was that? 
All right. But what we've got there now is all of our components all joined up. So I'm just going to move the router and jig to one side because for this particular project, we're finished with it. We don't need it anymore. So let me create a little bit of bench space because what we've got to do is a glue up now. Um, I'm just going to be using regular PVA. A tight bond, of course, so some good stuff. That's given me a bit more space. And what I can do now is just bring that into a better camera view for you. Let's pop that in the middle. Is that better, Ben? Shall I come forward a bit? There we go. There. All right, so if we possibly camera two is going to pick up a little bit, there we can see how these corners are all going to, all going to lock together like that. It's a difficult thing to glue up, I gotta say. It is tricky because of the shape. When you're gluing a kind of regular box together, some are, some are like this, a box, where well, you've got all four sides to pull against each other clamp-wise. So it's a bit easier, to be honest. This one, well, it's, it's open in, in one area here. It's open here, and it makes it really tough. I'm not going to glue this together all in one go. I'm going to glue it up in two sections. I'm going to glue this section first. At the same time, I'm going to glue this section. Wait for this to go off. Wait for this to go off. Then I'm going to bring the two components together. So once this is all glued and squared, I'm going to glue this piece to this piece. So I'm kind of gluing it up in two sections. Otherwise, you'll be wrestling for clamps. The glue will be going off. You won't be square. It won't be where you need it to be. And it'll become extremely frustrating. But what I want to do first, I just want to double check that I've got a good fit. I'm pretty confident that I have. I'm fairly used to this, um, this jig itself. But let's have a little look. There we are. So that bit is going to go in there quite nicely. I'm pretty confident. I want it to be tight, but still doable. There, that's gone in there nicely. You can see that there now. It's not square, I know. We've got a little bit of squaring to do. That bit's got to come in there like this. That's going to go in there well. I'm pretty confident again. Yep, that's going to go in there nicely. You can see that. That box coming together there now. All right, we've got that. So that forms the top bit, if you like. All right, that's going to come together well. And then we've got the base and the long side to come together. And I'm pretty confident that that's going to... That's kind of dropped in there almost by itself. All right, I've got to pull that in, which the clamp will help me do. But you can see where we're at there. All right, so you can see... We've kind of got that going on. So it's coming together quite nicely. So let's do the first bit of glue up. I'm going to glue this bit first. So I'm going to brew, open my vise, quick release. All right. One thing it is worth checking, just check that uh, some materials are more splintery than others. We know that. Check there's no significant splinters. You can even give this a light sand if you want, just to ensure there's no splinters going to be folded inside the joint and just hold off. It won't, you know, stopping it from coming together. Um, this is pretty good, to be fair. All right. Inside. So I'm just going to lock that there for a second. Um, I put a cross on inside. Remember inside? Where that, where that knot was, where, where, there we go. Oh, sorry, Ben, chasing each other. There we go. Just want to hide that inside. So that's going to be there like that. So that is going to joint up. I'm going to get my tapometer just in case. And I'm going to use, like I say, good old tight bond original. Just a really good quality PVA. It's never let me down. And I'm going to put a little blob Let's open up the nozzle. Just a little blob. <laughs> There's a little chip in there that's going to cause me problems. There we go. Little blob on the inside of each finger. Just a little low point. And that's enough, I find. All right. I'm not going to put glue on, on both bits. It's just going to be on this one bit. Then I'll get some sort of spreader. I like this sort of thing. 
you know, there's a few different types you can get. But I'm going to use this end, the kind of spatula end, if you like. And I'm just going to spread that around, spread it up the fingers, all around. I don't want to get, I'm not one of those people that feels the need to put an incredible amount of glue on there just in case. I'll put enough on. We want to make the cleanup as easy as possible as well. So I'm spreading up the sides. And for the cleanup, I can, I'm going to use the spatula end as well to scrape out some of the stuff in the corners. But I'm also going to get a little wet rag as well, just for the internal corner. Because that is sometimes difficult to get to when you've got a complete glue up, particularly if you've got to sand it or chisel it. So I make sure that that is the cleanest bit. The most difficult bit to get to on a glue up is the bit. Make sure that's spread all up the sides of the fingers at the low point. We're going to call it the gullet, the low point of the... There we go. Plenty of glue on there. Okay. I'm going to bring this piece in now. Making sure we're... Okay, I'm just going to tap him in position lightly. Shouldn't need too much of a tap. And there we are. But what we've got is a difficulty trying to keep this square now. Where are we going to put clamps? Now, I discovered these kind of UJK style clamps a little while ago. And I'm going to show you how I use them. So there we are, we're not 100% square, I know that, but this particular style of squaring frame clamp is amazing. Look at that, That's gonna, I'm going to be able to clamp that and square that at the same time. So I'll get a couple of clamps, excuse me for a moment. All right. All right, I can just clamp these in just like that, holding there. All right. Got another one. Just in there like that. Okay. Clamp that in. All right. That's going to just nudge that over a little bit. And when that's all clamped up, that's going to really help hold that square. So that's where I'm at for the moment. All right, just going to move that over gently. Okay, make sure that we're locked in. I can see a couple of gaps here, so I'm going to make sure that's locked in. So I'm going to put the clamps on very lightly. Then I'm just going to give it a little tap just to make sure it's all home where it should be. All locked in, all nice and square. Another one. See how easy these clamps are to operate. Okay. We've just got a little. Let's lock that one off a little bit more. There we go. That's better. That's better. Make sure that that is lovely. Okay, and then we can just ensure that everywhere is locked in. There's no major gaps. Just want to persuade that one in a little bit more. There we go. Right. Oh, should have tightened them up just a bit more, Craig. There we are. And there, that is locked in nicely. All right, so that's all squared in, ready to go. All right, locked in. I know that it's square, so that piece has come together really well. Really, really well. I think maybe before I give the, the clamps one final little clamp up, I'm just going to... Give that top piece one last tap. 
making sure that everything's really well seated. Very nice. Very nice. Okay. There we have it. Okay. Right. So that's the clamp up number one, if you like. Let's drop that over there a moment. We've got another clamp up to do now. Because remember, we've got the top bit to do. Now, it's going to work in a similar sort of way, but we are open in this area. And I want to get a bunch of clamps around this because this isn't just a corner. It's a kind of three-sided shape now. But if we try and clamp here, there's a real risk. What's going to happen, these two pieces are going to fold in. So what I've made is just a little bit there. It's going to drop in there. That almost makes up a box now. I've got a clamping surface. I can use this to clamp against. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use the, the parallel jaw clamps that I've become a big fan of. So I'll make sure that I know which way. Right, see how well that comes together. Look. Let's see. All right. So that's like that. That's like that. Okay. We know all that came together like that nicely. So what I'll do is drop my glue into these turrets first. All right, so just like before, splodge, little splodge on the, the lower point of each of the low points. Again, I'm going to call them gullets because, well, saw blade teeth, the low points of each saw blade tooth is called a gullet to me, and it kind of looks and sounds about right. All right, spread that out. These spreaders, like I say, are marvellous. So spreading up the sides, making sure we've got plenty. Like I say, you don't want to overdo this. Glue oozing out all over the place. So maybe it's just a bit of an experience thing, knowing how much glue to to use for particular jobs. So we're going to keep the clean up to a minimum. Make sure we've got all faces coated. You don't need masses on a joint like this. All right, so that's one done. All right, what we can do, we can drop that in position there. Now, it's gone together really well. And then we'll do the same here. And it's important with a glue up of any description, really. You've got everything to hand. You've got your glue, you've got your spreader, you've got your little mallet if you need it. You've got a wet rag. Because complicated glue ups, you've got to be on it. You don't want to be disturbed kind of mid glue up either. I think, oh, where did I put my mallet? Where did I put my spreader? Oh, I need a wetter cloth. Just be prepared. Clamps at the ready. Here we are. Mm -hmm. My one comes in there like that. That's going to form the, the top. You can see the lovely colours I've got in this top. That's nice and tight, that one. And it's important to work quickly as well, because, you know, the moisture from the glue does swell the material as well. So I'll put my little jig in place. I've got some lovely corner fits here. They're nice and flush. So I'll just... For the moment, tap all that home. Put that down like that. Make sure everything's... You can see how much easier it is once you've got a box shape. Even if you've got to make a piece here, the box shape really does help you um, to get everything aligned. And there we are. We can use clamps now. So the clamps, my clamp of choice. I've got a, a thing for these kind of parallel jaw clamps. Oh, stay there, Ben. That's it. These parallel jaw clamps, they've got a really wide clamping surface. They're not too big and bulky, but they're great for this sort of project. 
So I'm going to clamp this way first. All right. Avoiding the fingers. So I'm putting the clamp just below the finger point. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to do it up crazy tight just yet. Let's get everything in position first. All right, let's go this side as well. And you can see the clamping pressure, you know, is not just in this point here. It's this entire clamping face, which makes it really, really good. So I'm not going to give it all the clamping pressure just yet. All right. So that has clamped it this way across this. I can also clamp this way as well, forcing this piece to seat really well, even though it has sat very well inside, just to give it a bit of pressure that way. And again, the parallel jaw clamps come in. And they can, I can use my piece there and that little jig that I made and that can help clamp that in position as well. All right, just one through there. Do we need one the other side? Why not? I've got a bunch of them. There we are. Then we can put one more clamp through there. And then I'm happy that everything's in position. I can give it a little bit more clamp pressure knowing that everything has come together really, really well. What I'll do at this point, I'll look on the internals, just on the inside of here, and take out any glue in this area. The external cleanup is quite easy because you can get to it. This internal cleanup, I do as much as I can when it's wet. And for that, it is simply, I'll use me, my little spatula and a wet rag. And I'll get in there, quite easily and just scrape out any of the glue that's nestled in the corners all right both ways that's not too bad there at all all right and i'll leave them what sometimes i do is wrap my spatula in the cloth making sure i've got those clean those corners on the internal like i said that's a difficult bit on the internal Nice and clean. There we are. It's a good way to clean up these corners. I love these little spatulas. One more little wipe. Okay. Wow. There we are. So what we've got is the top box done remember the little jig just to help you clamp square and i know that's square um because i've made a few before we've got the other component as well which is clamped up ready to be i don't know i'd leave this glue about i'd probably leave it about an hour maybe two hours just so it's 100 percent gone off before i start getting the sand or all the plane to it which is what we're going to do on our next instalment. So join us, as said, join us tomorrow for part two, where we take it out of the clamps, we get the plane out, get the Merca sander, my beloved Merca sander out, and finish this particular product, even getting some oil on it. Thanks for joining us. If you've liked this particular video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Share with as many people as you can. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.